Good day, everyone. Well, after a brief and rather analog retreat, I went up to Charlottesville these past few days, and I was armed only with a 1964 Saconic film camera and a roll, of course, I needed a roll of eight millimeter film. I am back, I return. I'm still slightly singed, yet altogether intact. And yes, the burn remains, but my spirit is unscorched. You could still see, I could still not feel the tip. Maybe you now you could see it on camera. I still cannot feel the tip of my finger, my index finger. So hopefully I recover from that at some point. It makes it hard to write, which has delayed, of course, the writing of my book. But I'm trying my best. And while I was in Charlottesville, I had the pleasure of strolling the university grounds. They call it the grounds, not the campus. I had the camera in hand, rather heavy, actually. This is uh, pure, this is cast iron. They don't make them like these anymore. Now everything is plastic, made in Taiwan, made in China. It's all rubbish. And I was really... As, as I walked around the grounds, I was heartened to encounter several well-mannered UVA students who admired the camera. These were fine young men. They shook my hand. They asked thoughtful questions. One of them, uh, several of them actually said, I, I love your camera. And notably, they were very well-dressed for college students, that is. Uh, but you could immediately tell that they were not in the dirty business of Marxist thought. You can always tell. And it was a reassuring reminder that there still remain right-minded students who prefer precision over protest, reason and logic over activism. And today we return to the most noble of pursuits, and that is mathematics. I'm going to share with you an interesting equation, see if you can solve it. I'm curious about your strategies. And then I'm going to share with you very important, some really fascinating properties of equations. All right, everyone, I want you to look at the equation that you can see on these on the board or the screen or whatever you want to call it. I want you to solve the equation for x. In case it's too small and you cannot read it, it's the on the left side, you have mx plus a plus b divided by nx minus c minus d is equal to mx plus a plus c divided by nx minus b minus d. I want you to solve it for x, see what you can come up with. And let me know in the comments, uh, obviously do not skip towards the end of the video because I'm going to go over the answer. Uh, but before you get to the end of the video, uh, I want you to let me know in the comments, if possible, how you solved it, what you did. Uh, also be honest, if you cannot solve it, if you've never seen something like this, uh, let me know that. Uh, let me know about that as well. Uh, and please, those of you who know how to solve it or you think you have the right answer, please do not spoil it for the rest of people. Maybe do like a skip, you know where you have to read more, put it towards the end, but don't just put the answer. Uh, we do appreciate that, um, that you not do that. Uh, so, so that other students can, um, and just people interested in general can solve it. All right, uh, pause the video, take a moment to solve it, and then we're gonna discuss. All right, now you're gonna need some fundamental, some properties here before we even get into the answer. And I, I wrote them out, some useful laws that I know for a fact many of you are not familiar with. And if you, and if you aren't, it's a good time to, uh, to apply them. Uh, and some of you might be familiar with them, but you might not have done this in a while. So a couple of things to remember. When you're dealing with an equation, uh, both sides, if you multiply both sides of an equation by the same quantity, the equation remains the same. And we know that from, you know, Three, like 3x three equals 5. Well, if you multiply both sides by 3, you get 9x equals 15. The, the value of x will still be the same. 
right? Five thirds is the same as 15 over nine. The second point here of the law is when each side of an equation consists of a single fraction, then the numerator of either fraction may be exchanged with the denominator of the other fraction. The third thing is the sides of an equation can be reversed and you do not destroy the statement, the equation. So if I gave you mx plus b equals cx plus q, you can write that as cx plus q equals mx plus b. And I put a little example here. If a over b equals p over q, then a over p equals b over q. Now I've omitted the proof because I don't have time to do it, but there is of course a proof of that. Uh, then we have a corollary to this. Two sides of an equation of the form a over b equals p over q may be inverted. And therefore, b over a equals q over p. All right. The fourth principle here. When each side of an equation contains a single fraction, then you may add or subtract the numerator and the denominator of each fraction to obtain a new numerator or denominator. And you keep either the original numerator or denominator for the other term of the fraction. You always treat both sides equally, of course. You cannot play favorites with equations. They are very jealous. All right, now we now begin the process of uh, solving this equation. We have the original already, so we can apply the, some of the laws that I shared with you. So now we have mx plus a plus b And we're going to exchange, uh, we're going to use the, the property of exchanges that we talked about. That's going to be over the second uh, numerator, the numerator of the second fraction. So that's going to be MX plus A plus C. Which is going to equal now, we're going to exchange the other one, the denominator of the first fraction. So now we have NX minus C minus D. Divided by, and then of course we keep that uh, denominator, NX minus B minus D. All right, now. Using one of the other properties, we can now retain the numerators, but if we take the differences for the new denominators, we're going to have the following. We're going to have mx plus a plus b and we are left with, if we take the differences, uh, for, the, for taking the differences for the new denominators, we actually get, we end up with B minus C. So now we have B minus C on both sides. And of course, the second numerator is going to be NX minus C minus D. Divided by B minus C. So far, so good. Now, because we have fractions here, you, all, you, you should all be familiar with if you're watching this video, you can get rid of fractions when you multiply each side, in this case, by the denominator, B minus C. If you multiply both sides by B minus C, you get MX plus A plus B. is equal to NX minus C minus D, right? But now, of course, we have to remember we are tasked with solving for X. So we need to transpose. On the left side, we have MX plus A plus B, and we can move, it, we can move the, uh, the A and the B to the other side, but then we have a common here. We can factor this out. We now have M minus N times X. M 
And then, of course, on the other side, we're going to have, um, well, we have A, B, C, and D because we've moved the NXs here. So we have negative parentheses, and we can include all our uh, A, B, C, and D in there. And therefore, in this case, if we divide both sides, we want to isolate x. So we need to divide both sides by m minus n. And we are left with a plus b plus c plus d equals uh, over m minus n. But it's going to be negative, of course. And hence the value of x is, you, well, we can also clear out um, the parentheses if you want, but I'm going to leave it like this. But you can also do negative and then a plus b plus c plus d, right? Uh, ma making the whole fraction uh, negative. If you do that, you have to put the minus sign uh, in front of the fraction bar. So uh, let me know what you think. Let me know uh, if you solved it in this way or if you used a, a different way or if you are not familiar uh, with how to solve for x in this equation. Uh, I'm going to try and post another video later on today, another math video, but hopefully this is a, a good start, uh, start talking about equations. Thank you all, as always. We are now, by the way, over 40 thousand subscribers thank you all i really i i feel like sometimes i don't deserve it but i will like i said i will continue to do my best uh to bring you the math uh all kinds of math on the channel